Kiyamagyana Tumarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanina Tatmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripatsundu Bhayeva Cha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Kaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare we're reading, we're reading the Krishna book and we're up to chapter number 65 entitled Lord Balaram Visits Vrindavan. The Chinese devotees are there, they're translating, yeah? Yes, yes, Dharma. Okay. So Lord Balaram was very anxious to see his father and mother in Vrindavan. So he, he, he was, of course, he'd been living in Dwarka with Lord Krishna, but he, he came all the way to Vrindavan. He was very enthusiastic. He came by his chariot. So all the people in Vrindavan have been very anxious to see Krishna and Balaram. We've been waiting for them to come for a long time. So Krishna and Balaram, when Krishna left Vrindavan to go to Mathura that time, he was 11 years old. So they, they were, all the coward boys were very young and the gopis were young. But when Balaram came there, they'd grown up. So all the cowherd boys and the gopis, although they'd grown up, but when they saw Lord Balaram, they were so happy, they embraced him, and Balaram also embraced them. And then Lord Balaram came to see Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, and he offered his obeisances to them. And Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj offered their blessings. They gave blessings to Lord Balaram. When they spoke, to, they, they addressed Lord Balaram, they called him Jagishwara, Jagadishwara, meaning the Lord of the Universe who maintains everyone. Actually, Krishna and Balaram maintain all living entities. But still Nanda, Maharaj and Mother Yashoda they, were, they had to experience many difficulties because of the absence of Krishna and Balaram. But now Lord Balaram has returned to them and they're so happy to see him. They, they sat him on their laps and they I began their, and they began and they were crying incessantly. 
ราะว่าจากการที่ต้องมานะมานะอ่าห่างเพลินเนี่ยจากทางคู่หรือจากเอ่อทุกคนเนี่ยคือมีการร้องไห้กันอย่างแบบไม่หยุดยั้งเนี่ย so much love and affection for Lord Balaram that their tears wet the wet all the body of Lord Balaram มีการร้องไห้เป็นอย่างมากคือทั้งเอ่อน้ตาเนี่ยคือแบบปียกตัวบาลามไปหมด And after Lord Balaram had met Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, then he went to meet all the other older cowherd men, and he he went to offer his obeisances to them. <laughs> And when he met the younger cowherd men, all the young gopas, the cowherd men, the young men, they were young, younger than him. They would offer obeisances to Lord Balaram. So according to their different age and their relationship. They would offer obeisances and they would show affection for each other. Lord Balaram would shake hands with people who were his same age, and who were friends with him. And it, the, Lord Balaram would enjoy laughing and embracing each one of them. So after he was received by the cowherd men and the cowherd boys and the gopis and Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, then Lord Balaram was able to sit down. And he felt satisfied to be back home in Vrindavan. So, all the people of Vrindavan, and they they came and they sat down, uh, surround surrounding Lord Balaram. And they wanted to ask Lord Balaram about their welfare, about how is Krishna and Balaram. Uh, how is Lord Krishna? No, first, well, first of all, first Lord Balaram and ask them about their welfare. How are you all doing? And then the, they would ask Lord Balaram that because they hadn't seen Lord Balaram for for a long time, so they asked Lord Balaram different questions. Because all these people of Vrindavan, they sacrificed everything for Krishna. They were so attracted by the lotus eyes of Lord Krishna that they gave up everything for his service. And these people had so much love for Krishna that they never desired anything like going to the heavenly planets or impersonal liberation merging into the Brahman.
And they, they had not, not even, they didn't have even any interest to enjoy a life of opulence. And they were happy, they were satisfied living in Vrindavan, living a simple life in the village, just being cowherd boys and cowherd girls. And they were all, they were always absorbed in thought of Krishna. And they didn't want anything for the personal benefit. They were all in so much love for Krishna. And because Krishna had gone away and left them, that whenever they began to speak about Krishna, their voices would falter. And they would ask, they would ask Balaram about Krishna. So first Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Mai, they asked about, they said to Balaram, they said, are, are our friends like Vasudev and others in the family, are they all well? And said, no, they said, now you and Krishna are both grown up, married men with children. So you must be happy in your family life. So do you ever remember about us, your poor father and mother, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda? And of course, it's, they, they said it's very good news that that sinful King Kamsa was killed by Krishna. And all of our friends like Vasudev and the others, they had all been given so much trouble, they were put in prison, but now they've been freed. And it, it's also good that you and Krishna defeated Jarasandha and Kalayavana, and they're, they're, Kala, Kalayavana is dead now, Jarasandha, he's also killed by, was killed by Bhima with the help of Krishna. And now we know you're living with Krishna and you've made your residence in Dwarka. You've got a, the island of Dwarka there, so you're you have your own residence, you're safe there, people, not easy for people to attack you. So, so at this point, Lord Balaram had been speaking to the cowherd boys, but then the gopis came. And when the gopis all came, then Lord Balaram looked over them with very loving eyes. So 
So the gopis, for so long, they were they they've been feeling the absence of Krishna and Balaram, and they were almost like dead without Krishna and Balaram. <laughs> But, but now Lord Balaram has come back to Vrindavan, so the gopis want, they're asking him about the welfare of Krishna and Balaram. And the gopis asked Balaram, is Krishna enjoying his life surrounded by all these women of Dwarka? And does Krishna sometimes remember his father Nanda Maharaj and his mother Yashoda and the other friends with whom he was so intimate with when he lived here in Vrindavan? And has Krishna made any plans to come back to see us here in Vrindavan, to see his mother Yashoda? Does he remember us gopis? We are now without any company, any of his company. He's left us. Does he still remember us? Krishna is always in the company. Now he's in the company of so many cultured women in Dwarka. So has he forgotten all about us gopis? But we still remember him. We still remember him when we, we collect flowers and we make garlands. That time we always rem we're always remembering him. Uh, but when he doesn't come, then we just have to cry. We have to pass all of our time crying. We make all these garlands for him. He should come and accept these garlands from us, but he doesn't come. And the gopis told Lord Balaram, they said to Balaram, that you know that we would give up everything for Krishna's friendship. <laughs> Even in great distress, we cannot give up the company of our family members. It might be impossible for others to go up, to give up their family members. But the gopis said, we gave up our father and our mother and our sisters and our relatives. We gave them all up for Krishna. But Krishna... He didn't care about our, how we gave up everything. 
and he gave up now he just gave up us and went away we were having intimate relationship with him but without any without any thought without any consideration he just gave us up and left and went off to a foreign country but he was so clever he was so cunning and he he, he spoke so many nice words he said to us, he said, Oh, my dear gopis, do not worry. You have given me so much service, it's impossible for me to repay you. So the gopis said, We are women. So how could we disbelieve him? Now we can understand his sweet words were just cheating, he was just simply cheating us. So in this way the gopis were protesting that Krishna's went left Vrindavan, has gone away and left us. Then another gopi said, she said, my dear Balaram, we're all village girls, so Krishna could cheat us like that. But he won't be able to cheat the women of Dwarka so easily. They're not like us village girls. Don't think that those women of Dwarka will be like us. We village women were misled, we were tricked by Krishna. But the women in the city of Dwarka are very clever and intelligent. And the gopi said to Balaram, she said, I will be surprised if such city women are tricked by Krishna and if they believe his words. I don't think they will. Then another gopi began to speak and she said, my dear friend Balaram, she said, Krishna is very clever in using words. Nobody can defeat him in that the art of speaking. He's so clever. He can make colorful words and he can talk so sweetly that the heart of any woman will be misled. And not only is he good at speaking, but he has also perfected the art of smiling very attractively. Krishna 
And just by seeing his sweet smile, just by seeing his sweet smile, women become mad after him and give themselves to him. And then another gopi, another gopi. I think you have to mute again, Archana. Yeah, I did, but I don't know how come they can unmute themselves. Okay, let me mute again, Dumash. You are also mute, so okay. please unmute yourself. Uh -huh. So another gopi had this, she said, what is the use of talking about Krishna? It's no use, it's a waste of time to talk about him. If you're interested in passing time by talking, let us talk on some other subject, not about Krishna. Krishna can pass his time without us. Why can't we pass our time without him? Krishna is very happy passing his days without us, but we can pass our days happily without him. So the gopis were talking like this, and they were feel they were describing their feelings for Krishna, and they were becoming their feelings were becoming more and more intense. And as they were talking, they began to remember Krishna's smiling and Krishna's words and Krishna's attractive features. And then they would remember Krishna's characteristics and how Krishna would embrace them. So it appeared to them that Krishna was that the gopis actually felt that Krishna was present and dancing before them. And because of their sweet remembrance of Krishna, they couldn't check the tears and they cried without, without consideration. So Lord Balaram could understand the feelings of the gopis. He wanted to pacify them. And Lord Balaram treated the gopis very respectfully because he had so much love for Krishna. So Lord Balaram began to tell all the pastimes of Krishna. And he told them so nicely that the gopis became very satisfied. And 
And in order to keep the gopis in Vrindavan satisfied, Lord Balaram stayed there for two months during the month of Chaitra, which is March and April, and during the month of Vaishak, which is April, May. So for two months he, he spent his time among the gopis and every night he was with them in the forest of Vrindavan to satisfy their desire for conjugal love. So Balaram also enjoyed rasa dance with the gopis during these two months. So at that time of the year, that was the spring season. And in the spring, the breeze on the bank of the Yamuna was blowing very mi mildly and carried the aroma of different flowers from the forest. Especially there was one flower called Komudi, which was very fragrant, very pleasing, was carried in the air. And the, the moon was very beautiful and the, the sky was clear with the moonlight and then the banks of the Yamuna appeared very bright and pleasant and this way Lord Balaram enjoyed the company of the gopis. So then the demigod Varuna, he sent his daughter Varuni in the form of liquid honey to, to Lord Balaram. So this this Varuni beverage it was coming from the from the trees, from this hollow of the trees. And because of the honey, the whole forest became became full of the smell of the honey, this very sweet smell. So Lord Balaram was very attracted to Varuni and Balaram and all the gopis, they were, they all enjoyed the taste of the Varuni beverage and all of them, they drank it together. So this this honey, it's a natural beverage. It's natural, but it, if you drink a lot of it, you can you'll be intoxicated. <laughs> So while they were drinking this honey, all the gopis, they chanted about the glories of Lord Balaram. And Lord Balaram was very happy because he also became intoxicated by drinking the Varuni. So Lord Balaram's eyes began to roll due to the, the, the effects of the honey. So 
And Lord Balaram had this big long garland of forest flowers and the whole the whole atmosphere was so joyful and so happy. Lord Balaram was smiling and he was sweating due to dancing and due to the effects of the honey. So Lord Balaram was in a very happy mood. He wanted to enjoy the company of the gopis in the water of the Yamuna. So he called the Yamuna, come here. But the Yamuna didn't listen to him, just neglect, didn't do anything. The Yamuna thought, he's intoxicated, he's just drunk, I'm not going to do what he says. So then Lord Balaram became very upset with the Yamuna. So Lord Balaram took his plough and he began to break the Yamuna river into small streams. Lord Balaram has two weapons. One is the plough and the other is a club. And he takes service when they're required. Sometimes he'll fight with the club and sometimes he, he'll use the plough. So this time he wanted the Yamuna to follow his instructions. He told the Yamuna to come closer but she didn't come. So Lord Balaram took his plough, he wanted to punish the Yamuna. So Lord Balaram was intoxicated, so he spoke out to the Yamuna. He said, you wretched river, you don't listen to my instructions, now I'll teach you a lesson. You didn't come to me, so now I'll bring you by force with my plough. I'll force you to come here. I'll divide you into small rivers. So the Yamuna River became very afraid and she fell at the feet of Lord Balaram and prayed to him. And she said to Lord Balaram, you're very pleasing to everyone. I, I forgot about your, your position. Now I've come to my senses and I remember that you are very powerful. I know you're carrying all the planetary systems all on your head just by your expansion as Lord Shesha, Ananta Shesha. You hold all the different planets on your head. And you're the sustainer of the whole universe. You are full of six opulences. 
And I'm very sorry I disobeyed your order. I made a great offense. Please forgive me. Please understand me. I'm a soul. I'm surrendered unto you. And you're, you're known to be affectionate to devotees. So you should be kind on me. So seeing the Yamuna become very humble and submissive, then Lord Balaram forgave her. And she came near, and Lord Balaram entered into the water with all the gopis, and they enjoyed swimming in the water of the Yamuna. Just like an elephant enjoys with all the she all the female elephants, they go in the water, they enjoy together. So after Lord Balaram had enjoyed everything, then he came out of the water and immediately a goddess of fortune offered him a nice blue garment, cloth, and a valuable necklace made of gold. So then Lord Balaram put on the blue clothes and decorated himself with the ornaments. He looked very attractive to everyone. Lord Krishna has a dark complexion, but Lord Balaram's complexion is white. So when he was dressed, he looked just like a white elephant of King Indra in the heavenly planets. And the river Yamuna still has many small branches being scratched by the plough of Lord Balaram. All of the branches of the river Yamuna glorify the power of Lord Balaram. So every night for two months, Lord Balaram would enjoy pastimes with the gopis. And the time passed so quickly that all of those nights, they appeared to be just like one night. In the present, when Lord Balaram was present, all the gopis and all the people of Vrindavan became so cheerful. They were, they were so happy, just like they'd been when Lord Krishna was present. We should understand that the gopis who were dancing with Lord Balaram, they were the young they were young gopis who had never danced before with Lord Krishna. They'd never been in the Rasa dance with Lord Krishna. They were because at the time Lord Krishna danced Rasa dance, these gopis were too young. But now when Balaram came, the gopis had grown up, these gopis had grown up a little bit, they were old enough, and Lord Balaram would dance, Shrasa dance with them. 
แล้วก็ตอนแอปเปิลกูปีพวกนี้ที่เต้นกับไบรัมเนี่ยก็เป็นพวกกลุ่มกูปีที่ไม่เคยเต้นกับคริชนามาก่อนเพราะว่ากูปีกลุ่มนี้เนี่ยมีอายุน้อยมากตอนที่คริชนาจัดการเต้นการจัดอีลาเนี่ยตอนนั้นคือพวกเด็กกลุ่มนี้ยังอายุน้อยอยู่แล้วตอนนี้พวกเขาก็จะเริ่มเติบโตมากขึ้น And the gopis who are with Lord Balaram, they're different gopis from the gopis who are with Lord Krishna. All right. So we'll go on to chapter 66. When Draka delivered. So this story about Pandraka, we're told, it, it's very important because it proves that there's always many people who are big rascals and cheaters, and who consider themselves to be God. So even in the presence of Lord Krishna, when Lord Krishna was on the planet, at that time there were also foolish people who claimed that they were God. So this one person, his name was Pondraka. And he wanted to tell everyone that he was God. So when Lord Balaram was not in Vrindavan, when Lord Balaram was up, was away from Vrindavan, this Pondraka, the, he was the king of the Karusha province. He, So this this Pondraka sent a messenger to Lord Krishna because this this Pondraka was very foolish and very proud, so he sent a, a very stupid message to Lord Krishna. So Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, but this Pondraka challenged Krishna. So Pandraka challenged Krishna. He sent a messenger with a letter challenging Krishna, telling Krishna that I'm God, and that you should give the symbols of Vishnu to me. The Pandraka said, "I'm actually I'm Vasudev. You're not Vasudev. I am Vasudev." So there are many people who follow these kind of foolish people. They get followers. So although they're very stupid, somehow they attract. Of course, they attract other stupid people. So many foolish people accepted Pondraka as the personality of Godhead. Pondraka did not understand his own position. He was thinking himself. He he actually believed that he was God. He thought himself to be Lord Vasudev. So Pandraka told Krishna, he told Krishna, 
that I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead and I have descended on the earth out of my causeless mercy just to deliver all the distressed people. So Pandraka had, had many foolish people around him and they all believed that Pundraka was actually Vasudev, he was actually God. So this shows how these people were just like children. Just like when children play with each other, they'll choose someone, you be the king, and the, a little child becomes a king and the other children will b believe that he's the king. So like this many foolish people, because of their ignorance, they select somebody to be God. And, the, and that person then starts thinking that, I, oh yeah, I'm God. Just, they think they can create God just by, by votes, just by popular votes or just by like children playing. Oh. So, because Pondraka thought himself to be God, he sent his messenger to Dwarka to challenge Krishna. So the messenger reached Dwarka and he conveyed the message to Lord Krishna. So in the message, Pondraka had said, he said to Krishna, he said, I am the only personality of Godhead Vasudev. No man can compare with me. And I have, I have come to this world as King Prundraka just to show my compassion on all the suffering conditioned souls. And he said to Krishna, you have taken the position of Vasudev without authority. But you should not be telling people that you are actually Vasudev. You should give up your position. So all of these symbols of Vasudev which you have, you should give them up, you should give them to me. So come and surrender unto me. And if you don't come and surrender to me, then I challenge you to fight. And when we fight, then the battle, the decision will decide who is actually God. So all the members of the Royal Assembly, like Maharaj Ugrasena, 
and Lord Krishna, when they heard the message of Pandraka, they all laughed very loudly for a long time. So Krishna and the members, all his family members, they were all laughing and they were enjoying the laughter. And then Krishna gave a message to reply. He told the messenger to go back and tell Pundraka. So he told the messenger of Pundraka, he said, you tell your master that he is a foolish rascal and I call, call him a rascal and I refer I refuse to follow his instructions. And I'm never going to give up the symbol of Vasudev, especially my Sudarsan Chakra. And I will use this Sudarshan Chakra to kill you and kill all your followers. And I will destroy all you and all your followers. You're simply cheaters, a society of the cheaters and the cheated. So you, you're going to have to hide your face, you're going to be disgraced. And when your head is cut from your body by my Surasan and Chakra, then it will be surrounded by meat-eating birds like vultures and hawks and eagles, and they will eat your flesh. And Krishna said, you're telling me I should take shelter of you. He said, but you will have to be, you will need the mercy of all these birds. They're going to eat your flesh. Because your body will be thrown to the dogs and the dogs will eat it with great pleasure. All right, so we'll stop here today. Are there any questions? Are there no questions, Archana? Uh, yes, Gumash. God, you are the Sachi Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is uh, attachment to Aishwarya, the splendor of Vaikuntha, is not pure bhakti. Aishwarya is is not pure bhakti, you say? Yes, yes. Uh, Aishwarya and uh, attachment to um, the splendor of Vaikuntha. Is it is it pure bhakti? Your yes, is it pure bhakti or not? Yes, it's pure bhakti. Yes, why not? You think you can go? You cannot go to Vaikuntha without pure bhakti.
Yeah, Aishwarya. Some people are attracted to that Aishwarya feature, Aishwarya opulence. Some people they are attracted to Krishna in that mood of Dwarka, where Krishna is displaying opulence. And some people are more attracted to Vrindavan, where there's more sweetness. But both are pure devotees. People in Vaikuntha are all pure devotees. They have different rasas. We have, we have to understand the different rasas. Like in Vaikuntha, the rasa is more the rasa of, to be the servant. And a little bit, a little bit, there's the rasa of some kind of friendship. Just like Uddhava. Uddhava is there in Vaikuntha. Uddhava is in Dwarka. Uddhava he is a he's a friend of Krishna, but he's not like Arjuna. We see in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had been laying on the same bed, and he'd been eating food with Krishna, but he regretted that when he understood Krishna's position as the personality of Godhead. Arjuna regretted that he'd been over familiar with Lord Krishna. But Uddhava, he would never sit on the same level of Krishna. Although he was a friend of Krishna, he was always very respectful in dealing with Krishna. And he would never sit on the same level as Krishna. And Krishna would often ask Uddhava, what do you think? He would ask Uddhava for advice. But still Uddhava would always be very respectful. Although he has friendship, it's a friendship with respect. So that's the mood of Vaikuntha. It's all Dashyaras and a little bit of Sakyaras. Uh -huh. But you don't see, and you, you see also Vasudeva and Devaki, how they deal with Krishna. They're Krishna's parents in, in the mood of Aishwarya. You know that they offer prayers to Krishna. When Krishna appears in Mathura in the prison house of Kamsa, at that time, Vasudeva and Devaki offer prayers to Krishna because Krishna comes in his forearm form. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, however, they don't offer prayers to Krishna. They have a different, although they are also parents of Krishna, their parent, their their mood of being Krishna's parents is different from Vasudeva and Devaki, because Vasudeva and Devaki, they they, they give so much respect and they offer their prayers to worship Krishna. But Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they just think of Krishna as their son. They don't think of Krishna as God. They can just simply think of Krishna as their child. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's very clear. Now thank you for your explanation. Vaishnavi Vani has a question, Guru Maharaj. Oh, yes. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, ju just a minute, just a minute. Let, let Archana translate. Archana. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. การอารมณ์ของการที่อยู่ที่วัยเอ่อเอ่อวัยคนชาได้เนี่ยก็ต้องเป็นระดับความรักที่ดีเอ่อเขาเนี่ยในระดับที่บริสุทธิ์ในการ
It's only for Krishna. Yes, we offer the Tulsi leaves to the feet of all Vishnu Tattva. Vishnu Tattva means Lord Balaram. Also, like in the Pancha Tattva, you have Advaita Acharya, Lord Nityananda, and Lord Chaitanya. All three are Vishnu Tattva. So we offer Tulsi leaves on their lotus feet. But we don't offer on the feet of Gadarhar or Srivas Pandit. They're not Vishnu Tattva. But the, those who are, those lords, those in forms of the Lord which are Vishnu Tattva, then they can be worshipped with Tulsi, like Lord Nishringadev and uh, Lord Varaha, and all these yeah, different yeah. incarnations. Yeah, all the Vishnu Tattvas, yes, Guru Maharaj. Huh? Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Or any other questions here, Archana? Uh, no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Guru So then we'll stop here today. Thank you very much, Archana. Thank you, Guru For the translate and thank all the devotees for participation. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai.